start anything, you need to remember that when it comes to signs of cerebellar disease, uh, we have to know these signs because these are the signs that we might be able to detect during the cerebellar exams. And that will indicate to us that this particular patient might have a cerebellar disease. And now what are those, some of those signs? Uh, in order to remember them, I've come up with this um, Danish Petri. That is the mnemotechnic that you can use to remember the signs of cerebellar disease, because these are the signs that when you detect during the cerebellar exams, that would be a, an indication, okay, that this patient um, probably has a cerebellar disease, right? So what are those signs? Like I said, D-A-N-I-S-H-P-T-R, Danish Petri. The first one is called dysdiadocokinesis. And what that means, we're gonna like we're gonna take a look at it later on during our our physical exams. Ataxia, you have a nystagmus, you have an intention tremor, slurred speech, hypotonia, pass pointing tremor, and rebound. All of these things that you are seeing here, um, these are this. Uh, you know, major signs of, you know, cerebellar disease that, like I said, if you detect during the physical exams, you should start thinking of a particular cerebellar uh, problem. So without much ado, let's get into it. Like here, as you can see, we have to start with the hands, okay? What you tell the patient, remember tremor is one of the, what is one of our signs, Danish Petri, okay? I just, I just said, to, I just mentioned all of the signs. On that Danish Petri, you have tremor as one of the signs. First things, that's why you need to start. You can start with the hands, you can start with the match, okay? The gait to see, to assess the gait. But to make it easier, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's better to start, you know, while the patient is just sitting down. Then what you do is you tell the patient to stretch their arms like this, their hands like this. And if the hands are stretched, what, you, what are you looking for? You tell you must tell the patient to close their eyes, of course. When they stretch their hands, let them leave it for a couple of seconds, and then later on you tell them to close their eyes. If their eyes are closed, what you are looking for is maybe an involuntary movement that might be detected during this particular um, position. Um, if that involuntary movement is there, you know, that might be a tremor, like they do like this and they start trembling, tremor, 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 and like that. So that might, that might suggest that they might have a cerebellar disease because tremor, okay, when you're sitting down like this and you stretch your hands like this, you shouldn't, have, you shouldn't be having like that kind of tremor. When you do, that is indicative of a cerebellar uh, problem, it might be. So then from there, in the same hand, as their hands are stretched like this, okay, that's where we started with to see if they have a tremor or not. You tell them to stretch it like backwards like this. And if they do, what you are doing is you're trying to press your hand. You, the examiner, you see the examiner? You, the examiner, you are pressing your hand against theirs to check for a what? A rebound, okay? So sometimes um, what happens is patients that have this cerebellar disease, if you do like, if they do like this and then you press, okay, you put a force against their hands and then automatically you remove your hand, what happens is their hand goes up like this, okay? Their hand, they can't control the hand. Like for example, you and I, we are normal, okay? We don't have any cerebellar problem. If our hands are stretched like this and an examiner puts their hand on top of ours and automatically like immediately removes it, what happens is our hand might go up a little, just a little bit like this, but then it's not going to go beyond, okay? Like for these people, if their hand is stretched like this and the examiner removes their hand, what happens is they go like this, okay? It's called a rebound, okay? So that is one of the things that we've just looked into here. Like I said, look, rebound. Rebound is part of the what? Is part of the cerebral disease. So all of these things, like I said, Danish Petre is basically a mnemotechnic that you can use during your physical exams to start what thinking about signs of cerebellar disease so again let's go back to this patient's uh, problem um or i mean this patient's photo sorry like i said we started with the hand like this to see if they have a tremor then later on we check if they have a rebound okay then our next step is to see maybe because we are still on the hand remember we started like this to check for tremor and then we, I mean, remember we started like this to check for tremor and then we went like this to check for the what, to the rebound. And then now we are checking for something called pass pointing. 
this is what is known as a finger nose um, pointing. So the finger nose pointing, basically you tell the patient, uh, you put your, the examiner puts their finger like this, okay? And then the patient would also point their, their nose, would do like this, would point to their nose, and then try to touch the finger of the examiner. Now, after doing that for maybe one, two, three, four, five times, the patient must close their eyes now to do the same action, okay? So the patient's um, eyes will be open in the first five attempts, do like this, and touch the patient's what? Um, and touch the examiner's uh, finger like this, like this, like this, like this. Later on, the patient has to close their eyes to touch their what? To, their, to touch their nose and try to touch the, the what? the finger of the examiner, okay? And sometimes um, it, what happens is patients that have this cerebral disease, what happens is they start to have something called pass pointing, meaning the, pay, the examiner's finger is right here. The examiner's finger is right here. Instead of touching the examiner's finger, look at it, instead of touching the examiner's finger, their finger goes beyond the examiner's finger. And then later on, they try to bring it back to touch the examiner's finger. Okay, like this, like this. Their finger goes beyond the examiner's finger and then later on they bring it back to touch it. Okay, so they miss it by pointing. Okay, you can see this patient has no cerebral or whatever problem in terms of the pass pointing. The patient doesn't have it because the patient's eyes are closed and is touching directly the finger of the, of the examiner. Okay, then the later on we check for, on the same hand, we check for something called the tone because remember one of, one of our signs of the what of the cerebral disease is what hypotonia okay Danish Petri. hypotonia is part of the, our sign so what we are looking for and the same patients as you can see we try to what we try to flex their hands like this like turn it like this okay sorry um again it's like this okay you can see to read that the, um, the examiner is what is touching the patient's um is, uh, is holding the patient's hand like this and then the arm like this and trying to twist it like this. So the patient's hand must be relaxed. You must tell the patient to relax their hands. So what happens is usually if they don't have, um, I mean, if they have a cerebral disease, usually that it, this particular action, you realize that they have hypotonia, hypotonia, not hypotonia, it's hypotonic, okay? That's what you feel. Okay, but however, this patient, as you can see, is normal, their hands are well flexing and so on and so forth. So they don't really have any hypotonia or anything like that. So the tone, you must also assess the tone. Then later on, you must assess for this diadochokinesis, meaning you tell the patient, look, this is the patient, they do like this, okay? You do like this, while you are doing, the patient is doing the same thing. They do like this, like this. They start like uh, at, a, at a slow pace, and then later on, they move at a higher pace, like this, like this, like this, like this, and they start. So sometimes what happens is if the patient has a cerebral disease with a, their, this diadochokinesis as a sign, they cannot do this, okay? They, they, they start missing, okay? They start missing up like you, you look at, look at me, if I do like this, I'm doing really fast, okay? But patients with this diadochokinesis, they cannot do this, okay? So that's what is called uh, this diadochokinesis. Then the other thing is called what? Cerebral nystagmus. So in the cerebral nystagmus, what I'm looking for is called nystagmus. So the nystagmus yeah, usually is horizontal. So what you do is you make an H sign, okay? You, this is the patient. I'm looking at the patient, okay? And then the patient has to follow my what? My finger. Look, has to follow my finger. Usually we make a H um, sign, okay, like this. To follow like the patients must be looking at me looking into my eyes as you can see when you are starting the patient looks into your eye and then when you start moving your hand your finger the patient must not move their what their head that's why you are touching their chin so that the patient's head might not be moved what the only thing that has to be moving is their eyes so that you can you are checking if they have a nystagmus nystagmus like this involuntary eye movement rapid eye movement like this okay so usually that's what you detect. Then order on, then the other thing is like the slurred speech. 
Okay, the slowed speech, remember, is one of the signs of our cerebellar disease. So how are you looking for that? You're looking for that by asking the patient to repeat certain phrases. One of the most frequently used phrase is called British Constitution because it has a lot of sh sh okay? So you're going to see if the patient can repeat some sh something like this or other things, okay, that, that include um, repetitive phrases like, okay? So you have to tell a patient, repeat after me. And then you say British Constitution, something like, and the patient has to say it. If they don't say it properly, then probably they are, uh, they are, their, their speech is slowed. It doesn't have to be this word exactly. It could be another word or phrase, sorry. So any phrase that you can repeat to see if the patient's speech is what is audible, is uh, comprehensible, and so on and so forth. So if they have a slowed speech, you will realize that they have a slowed speech. All right. So the other thing that you have to test for is something called your gait. Okay. The gait that is um, how they are walking. Um, it becomes like a cerebellar gait, we call it. So the cerebellar gait or ataxia or ataxic gait, we call it, is characterized by unsteadiness, incoordination, and irregular irregularity of movement. So we call it a zigzag type of walk. So they walk like this, like here, as you can see. You're going up and down like this, like this, their, their, their legs are well spread out like this, okay, like as if they are somehow drunk, okay, so it's sort of like a zigzag type of walk, okay, they don't walk in a normal way. And then if you detect that, then basically that's another way that you will know that is one of the signs. Then the other thing that you look for is something called what? Romberg's test. Romberg's test basically tests for proprioception, proprioception. So proprioception is basically uh your awareness the awareness of uh your position okay that's what it tests for however sometimes people can still use it to test for uh sort of like coordination or equilibrium in in cerebral exams so what you tell what you do the to the patient is that the patient stands straight okay and then their eyes are let on closed after a couple of seconds while your arms are like going around them like this okay just to protect them because they might fall down okay if they have a cerebral disease they start to what they start to have like um involuntary movement and then they they might fall down if their eyes are closed and they are standing in such a position so what you do is you hold your hands like that um as a, an examiner and you check their movement like a little bit of movement it might be normal but if it is too exaggerated that they are about to fall uh, sometimes uh, cerebral disease uh, patients might even fall in such a position if the examiner doesn't hold them properly. So that is what is known as a Romberg, uh, Romberg test positive or a positive Romberg, Romberg test. Okay. Then the other thing is basically um, the fact that you need to make sure that these patients, um, they are well taken uh, care of in terms of whatever uh, problems that they might have, as you can see. We have all of these, okay? All of these things, like I said, these are the signs that you are looking for. And all of the exams, all of the tests, okay? All of the tests that we have looked into, they have told us whether the patient has this diacotic, this diadocokinesis, this diadocokinesis is like this, the tip top sign, okay? Like this, like this. Ataxia is through the match. You tell the patient to take a, to take a walk and see if they have um, ataxic gait or cerebellar gait. Nystagmus is basically when you test for their eyes like this, okay? You look, their eyes are looking into yours and you hold their chin and then your hand start, your finger starts to move around them like in a H sign to see if they have a particular nystagmus or rapid high movement involuntarily moving to one direction or another. Intention tremor, okay? Intention tremor is usually when they are doing the nose, um, nose pointing, I mean, nose finger pointing. I mean, the finger nose pointing, we call it, when they are doing like this, as they are moving their finger from their nose to the what? To the finger of the examiner, their hands and their hand starts to what? Trem. It has to do some tremor, tremoring, like uh, intentional, unintentional, uh, rapid movement. So they do like this and they are doing like this and it goes like this. Their hand is trembling. So we call that intention tremor. So slurred speech is when you ask them to repeat certain words and they cannot repeat it properly, like British constitution, okay, or South African constitution, something like that. So they are, they cannot, their speech is slurred, their speech is bad, you know, you cannot understand what they're saying. Hypotonia is like when you hold their hands like this, trying to do like this, okay, like this, to, to flex their hands like this, their hand, okay. 
Um, pass pointing is like when you put your, when they are doing the nose finger pointing again, what happens is this is the finger, okay? This is the finger of the, of the examiner. If this is the finger of the examiner and they do like this, they pass it, okay? They pass it. Instead of touching it, they pass it. So we call it pass pointing. Okay, the tremor is like when their hands are like this, stretch like this, okay? Okay, when their hands are stretched like this, you, you tell them to stretch their hands like this, and then all of a sudden they start what? They start tremoring. The rebound is like when their hand is stretched like this, their hands are stretched like this, and then you put your, the examiner puts their hand on top of their hands and remove it, all of a sudden they, they go like this, okay? That is basically it. So 